It has a nourishment for the soul. It has reproof. It has correction. It has encouragement. May we ask the Lord, revive my heart with the scripture. Reprove me, correct me where I am wrong. Encourage me through the scripture. May it not just inform you, may it inflame you. Open the scripture to Acts chapter 6. Please stand up. And let's read Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 until all the way to 15. Acts chapter 6, all the 15 verses alternatively, please. As we read, please try to understand. Now at this time, while the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint arose, arose on the part of the Hellenistic Jews against the native Hebrews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. Verse 2. Therefore, brethren, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of spirit and of wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. The statement found approval with the whole congregation, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Procorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a proselyte from Antioch. The word of God kept on spreading, and the number of the disciples continued to increase greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The way to read is, and Stephen, full of grace and power, was performing great wonders and signs among the people. But some men from what was called the synagogue of the freedmen, including both Cyrenius and Alexandrians, and some from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and argued with Stephen. But they were unable to cope up with the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. Then they secretly and they stood up the people, the elders and the scribes, and they came up to him and dragged him away and brought him before the council. For we have heard him say that this Nazarene, Jesus will destroy this place and alter the custom which Moses handed down to us. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we are weaker vessels, fill our hearts. Lord, this is the intention for today, for us to worship you and to receive the scripture. Lord, we, as we prepare our hearts, fill our hearts with the scripture that you intend for us today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. A few weeks ago, one of my college friend, classmate, sent me my old picture, which is about 26, 27 years ago. 
while I was in the college, when I was in masters. I used to dress like a pop star. My cap was always at the back, turned back. I always had a loose t-shirt and I had a silver chain hanging with a big locket here. You know the style? I stand like backstreet boys. I'm not kidding. Backstreet Boys is my song. Michael Jackson is my model. I used to practice their style. Everybody, or most of us, we may have models in our life as we grow. One girl, she got baptized like a Barbie girl, baptizing in the bathtub, or bathing in the ba bathtub. Her model is a Barbie doll. Some people have their parents, father or mother, as a role model. Some people have pop stars as a role model. Some people, movie stars. And other people, influential people, as role, model, role models. But scripture says, our model should be the Lord Jesus Christ. Scripture says, that our qualities, our nature, our characteristics should be like the Lord Jesus Christ. In the scripture, in Acts chapter 6 and 7, we see a role model who took Jesus Christ as a role model and portrayed the characteristics of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is Stephen. He displayed the righteous characteristics of the Lord Jesus Christ in a human being. That is the message title today. Character of righteousness in Stephen. He portrayed the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. He preached like Jesus Christ. He lived like Jesus Christ. He almost died like Jesus Christ. He is the first martyr, martyr in scriptures, Stephen. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. Very important verse. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Stephen did live to righteousness. Until this day, his life speaks. His righteousness speaks to our hearts. That's why we are meditating upon chapter 6 of Acts. The righteous characteristics of Stephen displayed. As we go further, may Lord help us to understand his characteristics from Acts chapter 6 and 7. I want to put some characteristics. If you have notes... Please write it down. It will help you. First characteristic that we see in verse 5. The statement found approval with the whole congregation and they, those, and they chose Stephen, a man what? A man full of faith. This is the first characteristic of Stephen, if you want to see the faith, the man full of faith, his faith, if you want to see, you have to understand chapter 7. You see, he quotes all the people of the history, all the biblical people of the history, or most of the biblical influential godly men of Bible in the, from the Old Testament. And what he does is, he strongly believes. You see, God worked in the history. He will work even today. He completely sold off in his faith to God. To God. God has worked in the life of Abraham. God has worked in the life of David when he took a sling and killed Goliath. God's presence was there. It was not David. 
It is God's hand behind David's hand who killed Goliath. He strongly believes and he applied the same thing in his life. You see, that's why he did not hesitate to die. What made him to die? Faith, Holy Spirit. You see, he's full of faith. There was no doubt about him. His faith is not 99.999%. His faith is 100% for God. He did not hesitate even to die. Daniel showed, uh, showed his faith in lion's den. David showed his faith when he was facing Goliath, the big man, giant. Stephen showed his faith when the mob was around him. He did not hesitate. These people may kill me. You see, I can imagine Stephen's faith is like a lighthouse in the ocean. You see, a lighthouse is not at the beach, it's in the ocean. Especially in the evenings, all the tempest waves, they come and they hit the lighthouse. But he is that light which is shining on the top of the lighthouse. He shows the way, even the tempest waves come upon him, he shows the ways to the ship, which way to go. Can you imagine Stephen like that? On that day, as Stephen was preaching from, uh, in Acts chapter 7, we see, as he was preaching, he showed at least one single man the path to the righteousness, the path to the faith. You know that man. I know that man. We all know that man. He's so popular in first century. He's so popular in the New Testament. He wrote the most epistles, most New Testament. He is Paul. He is called a ringleader. You see, he was dead at the present, at the death of Stephen. And Paul did not forget that. He mentions in Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22. Sorry, I think it's Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter, sorry, Acts chapter 22, verse 20. Acts chapter 22, verse 20. And when the blood of your witness Stephen was being shed, this is Paul was mentioning here. And when the blood of your witness Stephen was being shed, I also was standing by approving and watching out for the courts of those who were slaying him. You see, Paul could not forget the incident. It pierced his heart. Coming back to Stephen, he is full of faith. He is kind of a lighthouse who shows faith, who displays faith, or who shows the path to the faith unto the people. So the first point is full of faith. Second point from Acts chapter 6. We are seeing the righteous characteristics of Stephen. From Acts chapter 6 and 7. Second point. What is there in verse 5 after full of faith? It says, and of Holy Spirit. He is full of Holy Spirit. What is the first point? Full of faith. Second point, he is full of Holy Spirit. D.L. Moody has said, a man cannot hear without ear. A man cannot hear without ear. A man, not, a man cannot inhale air without lungs in his life, in his body. A man, not, a, a man cannot live a Christian life without filled by the Holy Spirit. Some group of people were debating. Group of uh, elders were debating whether to call D.L. Moody for the conference or not. Some people are saying that we should call, we should call D.L. Moody for this conference. And other people are saying that, why? Is he the monopoly of the Holy Spirit? They were talking about the D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody is filled with the Holy Spirit. So they were saying that, is D.L. Moody, is the, he is the only monopoly of the Holy Spirit? And the other people said, no, he is not the only, only monopoly of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has the monopoly on D.L. Moody. Occupied, complete. When you fill the glass with water, when it is full, you will say it is full. 
When you put more, it will just overflows. That's Stephen. Full of Holy Spirit. Full of encouragement. Full of godly life. You see the sermon that he preached in chapter 7? What a man can preach that sermon. See, I cannot preach like Stephen. You cannot preach, Steve, preach like Stephen because we don't have the Holy Spirit like him. He's full. He's not 99.9. He's 100% filled with the Holy Spirit. When a message is preached, it should be preached by the Holy Spirit, not by the iPad. You see, do you think Stephen, he prepared his message? Jason your uncle told me, Thou shall not use iPad. <laughs> I used to use when uh, I started uh, church in the beginning of the years. You say, we don't want to tie to the notes. We don't want to tie to the notes. We want to tie to the Holy Spirit. Charles Spurgeon has elaborated on this subject. Do you think Stephen has prepared this message? This came up instantly. You see, how, how can the message come instantly? When you meditate on the scripture, when you read the Bible day and night, Thanukunda was the message. Apurka put Chapalana could Edo Kontos the message. You see, Stephen, he did not depend upon the oratory skills. Maybe he would have had the natural skills of explaining. But it is clear that he has very good scriptural understanding. You see, the public speaking, they practice in front of the mirror. They practice all the gestures, all the gestures. They repeat, repeat ten times. They buy hard their message. They buy hard their eloquence. Everything is in them. And then they come and they present. It is like a closing the Holy Spirit in the room and locking it and coming. You see, Charles Spurgeon has taught me. Charles Spurgeon said whenever he climbs to the podium, he has 18 steps. Yeah, each step as he climbs, he prays, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Eighteen times he says and he comes here. I have only two steps. But at least ten times I would say there. Another thing that I do is, Lord, forgive my sins. Lord, forgive my sins. Nobody is perfect. It is not that I am doing any sin. No. I may unintentionally or anything. I want to give sold of all my heart unto God before I come here. I have learned that. You see, Stephen is full of Holy Spirit. That's why he could uh, uh, proclaim that the message, whatever he has learned from Torah, whatever he has heard of the people of the world. He, he starts with Abraham. I cannot imitate Stephen. But he would have said something like this. You remember, I'm just paraphrasing. You remember, you wicked crowd, stiff-necked people. You remember your father Abraham. You remember his descendants. You remember how God has called Abraham out of the land of Chaldeans. When he was in Mesopotamia, the God Almighty has appeared to him. Abraham, walk out. And Abraham, he did not hesitate. He left and settled in Haran from Chaldean's land. And then God gave him promise. Abraham, I'll make your descendants like the stars of the heaven. Don't you know you stiff-necked people? And then God has fulfilled the promise by giving him the descendants and out of his loins came Isaac. Don't you know the children of Isaac, Jacob and Esau? Don't you know that Jacob has produced 12 children and they eventually became 12 tribes? And how God has sustained them in the land of Egypt? How he had made them walk out from the land of Egypt, how they ended up, ended up in the promised land. The land that you're staying now, standing now, is belonged to your father Abraham. Now you're enjoying the fruit of the land. 
because of the promise that he has given to Abraham. How many prophets you have killed? How many prophets of the world have been mentioning the righteous one will come, the righteous one will come, the righteous one will come? You did not take it. So much jealous in you. You stiff-necked people. You tough people. You people who suppress the Holy Spirit. You see, Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit. Whenever we preach, bring the word of God, or especially for the teachers of Sunday school, what is our attitude? Manchiga pradhan cheskun ravale. Atlan chado kada den kado. Scripture baaga chado ravale. Gripun dalis scripture lo naak ledu. I am striving for that. But we have to spend time, 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 time. Scripture baaga chado ravale. But as you are reading, you should pray the Lord fill me with the Holy Spirit. Not only the messages. Sunday school kelna purugada. You should be preached by the help of the Holy Spirit, not by the help of the points. And it, and you have to spend time when you preach. You cannot just walk in pelaleka than te easy kiti skoda gvile do. You're not doing your job. Whenever I finish my message, when I sit down, the first thing that comes it to my mind is. The opportunity that God has given me, did I use it or not? Well or not? Otherwise, I feel ashamed. We should be preparing ourselves, reading the scripture, preparing ourselves, and more importantly, even when you go to the Sunday schools, twins classes, Lord, fill me with the Spirit. You see, Kunni Matlo China, Divin Karanga, Hrudim Kadile Karanga, Holy Spirit. Next point. He is full of faith, full of Holy, Holy Spirit. And then verse 8, verse 8. And Stephen full of, full of grace. Grace and unmerited favor. And I, to put it in simple terms, unmerited favor. To put it in simple terms, if you come to my home, I give you lunch. It's kind of, maybe if I come to your house, you give me lunch. It's a favor. It's a favor. When a thief comes to my house, when a thief comes to my house, I got hold of him and I tell him, I forgive you. It's a favor. It's a favor. It's not grace. It's a mercy. It's not grace. I forgive you. You can go. As he's going along, giving him $100, that's grace. Put that $100 in a Bible and give him. Have lunch. I don't know how is your family. Feed your family. That's called grace. He doesn't deserve. Not only forgiving, but giving him extra. You see, uh, long ago I have given a court example where a thief kills a person, a thief uh, did some criminal activity, and he goes to the court, and the court judge is sitting, and he passes the verdict, and he says that life sentence, 14 years jail, or $2 million put in the counter. This man, he doesn't even have $100. So he was walking in the court. And then this judge takes out his coat, take, takes out his coat and puts his hand on, the, on that uh, criminal. He takes him to the counter. He gives a big check, $3 million instead of $2 million. This man is shocked. The judge who is judging is the father. The, the judge who has taken out the coat and went and paid the penalty in the counter is the Lord Jesus Christ in the form of God. He's judge, he's also repaying. He just took out the court, Philippians chapter 2, verse 6, 7, 8. He paid the penalty. That's called grace. Okay? If you're not saved, if you're not, especially the youth, if you're not saved, Jesus Christ is once again remain, reminding that if you come to him, he'll repay all the penalty for you, all of your sins. That's grace. Mana Stephen ki chala chakra unanta grace. Stephen has a lot of grace, full of grace. Deacons in select chastanar. Deacons, he fit for the job. Deacons settle gondali. Always helping, always helping. Manantacha hospital help chasar beautiful. 
That's the nature. Without expecting anything. Stephen has that ability. He did a master's degree in that. Do you know that? He has a degree in university called Almighty God. He learned from God what grace is. He learned from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ has forgiven me everything. You see, he learned at the foot of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has full of grace in his life. And the fourth quality, verse 8. And Stephen, full of grace and... Ah, <laughs> panchundale. <laughs> power. He's full of power. You see, in the scripture you see, in the Old Testament you see the God's power. In the New Testament you see God's power. How Jesus Christ has uh, uh, brought the vision to a blind man. How Jesus Christ has healed sick people, paralytic people. How Jesus Christ has even resurrected the dead. You see, through what? Through power. Through power. In the worship message, God has reminded us the power of God. Through the word of his mouth, he created everything. It's power. If you see the Old Testament, you see all God's power. How God has led all the uh, these, uh, uh, Jacobites or Israelites from the land of Egypt. Ten what is that? Ten plagues. Ten plagues with his power. Red Sea is parted. Can you imagine we are, as you go through one and the sea is parting? Say for example if it is parted. If God is standing the other end and calling you, will you walk? Will you walk? Not some, huh? Yanta bhai it's the power. Power of God. He put mana from heaven. Rocks are bursted forth. Wilderness. What used to gush out from that? You see the power of God. Pompey, a governor in Rome, said, Nenu Kalu Kadipite, Italy and Togoda War, soldiers and Togoda line a paiter. War said the meter. Pompey has said, if I just move my feet, all the Italy soldiers will get ready for the battle. If Almighty God, he doesn't have to move his feet. If he says a word, all the heavenly hosts will get ready for the battle. You see the power of God? <clears throat> the fourth quality that Stephen has is full of grace and full of power. One question you may ask, he's full of power, he's full of everything. Why did he die? Here it says, Stephen, full of grace and full of power, was performing great wonders and signs among the people. He could not save himself. That's what they said to Jesus Christ also. His power, his own power did not save him. You see, our mind, human mind is wicked mind. We want to abuse the power. If God gives us power, we want to abuse the power. But God did not give power to self-glory. You see, in the India, the miracle meetings, healing meetings that you go there, people call them, they get glory. I want to become so famous, so famous, so famous. They want to attract the crowd for self-glory. But God does not give power for self-glory. God does give power to Stephen. And that power helped him to stand for Christ on the day and die for him. You got the point? That power helped him to stand boldly. Sometimes when God gives us power, to stand, by shake Fifth point. In verse ten, but they were unable to cope up with what? Fifth point. But they were unable to cope up with the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. Wisdom, Antony. He's full of wisdom. Vakka manishile ni quality sunai He's full of wisdom. Wisdom and ain't wisdom and a matlar kunar. 
ఒక బిలీవర్ ఒక అన్బిలీవర్ మాట్లాడుకుంటున్నారు వన్ వన్ బిలీవర్ వన్ వన్ బిలీవర్ దే ఆర్ డిబేటింగ్ విత్ ఈచ్ అదర్ ఓకే ది అన్బిలీవర్ ద బిలీవర్ సెట్ గాడ్ హ్యాస్ క్రియేటెడ్ ఇన్ ద బైబుల్ యాడమ్ అండ్ ఈవ్ యు నో హౌ ఈవ్ కేమ్ ఈవ్ కేమ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద రిబ్స్ ఆఫ్ యాడమ్ అండ్ దెన్ ఈవ్ కేమ్ అండ్ హీస్ ట్రైంగ్ టు ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ అండ్ హీస్ ట్రైంగ్ టు put forth all his knowledge and understanding and wisdom and the other man unbeliever just poked his argument with just one pin he said adam lunchi oka rib teesesthe mari ippudu bodies ni people shariralni when doctors examine one rib is not less they have all ribs adam ki rib poyina appudu mari andarki rib oka rib tappu ga undal takku undal kada avuna kada logically thinking how do you answer that argument break ayyin appudu inka ayana nadu adam ki cheyi irigipothe putte koduku cheyalekunda padtada cheyalekunda padtada cheyi untada accident lo cheyi irigipindi adam ki cain ki able ki cheyalekunda padtada vallu kaadu kada adam ki rib desthe kodukulu rib lekunda padtara rib untade you got the point you see deep insights wisdom deep insights steven knows how to go deep insights he has deep insights those kind of wisdom come when you read the scripture okay he knows how to argue with these people you see these people who won the argument steven won the argument according to me you see he has the eloquence of the tongue he has the good understanding and knowledge of the scripture he was boldly preaching scripture says that the way that he is preaching they could not cope up they couldn't take it luke's gospel chapter 21 verse 15 says that at that time i will give you wisdom and eloquence that your opponents cannot contradict you cannot withstand you that's what jesus christ has said in luke's gospel chapter 21 verse 15 and that's what happened in stephen's life they could not withstand it was not just stephen he was uh, talking there was behind him jesus christ was standing i will tell you i'll prove my point that jesus christ was there later on he is full of wisdom the argument was like between serpents and dove serpents the mob and steven and with his eloquence with his wisdom other people cannot stand next to sixth point sixth character in verse 15 acts chapter 6 verse 15 acts chapter 6 verse 15 and fixing their gaze on him all who were sitting in the council saw his face like the face of an angel how is his face shining steven's face like an angel he is full of light like an angel how does the angel's face shine usually you see the cherubims who stand in god's presence right now in heaven who ever stands before god his glory will fall upon the people who are standing around okay the cherubims in revelation chapter uh, chapter 4 we see they continuously sing holy 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 in the presence of the lord and his glory falls upon the cherubims when you see the cherubim you cannot stand it's kind of a lightning and that's what happened to moses in exodus chapter 34 the glory of the lord was shining upon the face of the moses and these people couldn't see it he has to put a veil in front of him such kind of glory was shining upon steven who was standing next to him jesus christ enduku padinda velu akkada yesu prabhu unnaru of course he had he saw the lord jesus christ when he looked up to heaven jesus christ was present with him here he was present even in the heavens as he is receiving the steven is full of light his face was shining like an angel like a lightning six signing 
seventh one. Chapter 7, verse 2. Acts chapter 7, verse 2. Verse 1 and 2, children. The high priest said all these things so to Stephen. Stephen responded in verse 2, and he said, Hear me, brethren and fathers. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran. And he said to him, Leave. You see, in verse 2, and he said, Akar two words in the NTIE. Verse 2. And he said, Hear me. In NASB it says, hear me. And then he starts his preaching from there. And he starts, you see, many different people here. In verse 2 we see Abraham. And then, uh, and then eventually he speaks about Jacob. In verse 8. And in verse 9, Joseph. And again, verse 15, Jacob from Egypt. And then he talks about Moses from all the way from verse 20 onwards. He mentions three stages of life of Moses. Moses' birth at the age of 40 and then as he was leading the age, uh, uh, children of Israel later on after 40 years, how he has led all through the life of Moses. You see, he knows everything. He knows in detail. He said when his brothers came to him at the second time, then Joseph revealed himself. He knows all the details of the scripture. So our seventh point is, he is full of scripture. Hear me, and he started all his scripture, recited all his scripture, what he has learned. He is full of scripture. Scripture is our guide star. Lord star. Guide star. People used to see the stars, and they, they, and, and they get the directions. It's kind of their GPS for them. Scripture is Stephen's GPS. It's his guide star. He's full of scripture. Seven A. Eighth one. Chapter seven. Eighth one, chapter seven, verse fifty-one. Eighth righteous character of Stephen in chapter seven, verse fifty-one. You men who are stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears and always resisting the Holy Spirit. You are doing just as your fathers did. You see, he's calling them stiff-necked people, uncircumcised people. You are resisting, your ears are resisting the Holy Spirit. Chala courage ka wale. It like defend yeh lante. Class pe ka lante, man language chappa lante. Correction chee lante. Chala courage ka wale. And the key Rojula preaching just there, passion undo, correction undo. All feel good, feel good messages. Correction is the this kundara, mid this kundara. This kundara, leather. This kundara. Not for the self boast, but when I went to Arizona, when I was preaching in the church after the church. Few people came to me, brothers and sisters. They're asking, you know, how can you preach like this? You are correcting all of us. How can you do it? And then, no, no, no. Miru, me past na next time preach ne pelo pena nakfar kem bada. This is how I preach. <laughs> this is a burden of pastor. Pastors burden on today. Corrections go down one part of the preaching. And the locum low, a correction just the feel it remo, next and a rare mo church key. Chala concerns on today. But unfortunately, this is the responsibility of the man of God who is giving the word. Eight qualities you say, all eight qualities. One or the other, one or the other, one or the other qualities I clearly see in our church. The way that you have displayed the love, the grace upon Brother Kiran's family, it portrays the character of Stephen, the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how a church should function. When I get calls from local churches, 
and the elders, they complain. They tell me, in our church, when something happens, our church doesn't care. But I see God's love that you have showed upon this family. I want to praise you, uplift your hearts. But I also want to give small correction. It's my responsibility. Small correction. Chinchi noon take a telik chastan dam kuni mistakes. I've got a correction this call. Mano. I put on a Lord's Day service jirinapuru, Bible studies jirinapuru, church prayer jirinapuru. The first thing that you want to do is attend the prayer meeting, attend the Bible study, attend the church service. Rest all next. Rest all next. You don't have to visit the hospital. You don't have to visit the deathbed. Nenu deathbed me thunna koda. I don't want to allow anybody to the hospital. Church service I go to Radham. Bible study I go to Radham. Church prayer I go to Radham. In the scripture, it is called preeminence. Passion on dalle deyudante. Preeminence. First importance. Let the dead bury the dead. Jesus Christ has said, Let the dead bury their own dead. Come and follow me. First and preeminence to the Lord Jesus Christ. One believer wife chen pain under church prayer meeting Jerutan and a believer wife chen pain. Church meeting Kalale. Lente wife chen pain. I'm a good believer. In Chiale. Chapala, other believers Chapala. An angel said, Chaka ready pedu, while Amadu got a Chaka dead body in a prayer meeting was not to ready Jesus said. Jesus inclubate his Thalamis Chakil prayer meeting attended. Prayer meeting on type in Tartha Chippe, it was Jerry in the Jeppe, Andre Charanta, in Thorndu Dachuan Jeppe. Preeminence, undivided attention, Dali, Demodeke. Andre Yukuna, near hospital on a Naki Menagoda, church prayer kill first a prayer chair. Peter J. Lona put Sangamanta or Pradincher, Akun, the under Kelsey Pradincher. Mana Pradan Lu Marusta situations me. Manaveli Yavana, your hospital visitation gunning came and chased Nantamatan Marustama, Waka Selnil Mala life this Kragalamanum. What we have done is how the world reacts. You see, compassion. This is what the world does. If somebody met an accident in an emergency situation, world people also go there. Then what is the difference between a Christian and an unbeliever? A Christian gives preeminence to God. Prayer meeting, Bible study, church services is of first importance. Then comes Vijay Sanagazidi or anyone else on their deathbed. Eight characteristics that we have seen. Eighth one, he was uh, boldly preaching the word of God, which is lacking in today's world. Ninth characteristic, chapter 7, verse 60. Acts chapter 7, verse 60. Acts chapter 7, verse, verse 60. Then falling on his knees, I was thinking, Chalaman, the born Christians, he pernato. Ma Christians and you know, a situation not twist chase him. And I was thinking how people can twist in this situation. Prayer meeting Rakunda, hospital Keldaniki. How can this twist? Brother Raymond, the cut a prayer chase a bull me, I could hospital get prayer just to know. Anachaga, choose her a twisting at a yastero. Evil works like that. So you want to be careful. Anyway, ninth, uh, ninth characteristics in uh, verse 60 of Acts chapter 7. Then falling on the knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. Forgiveness. He is full of forgiveness. Lord, you take the revenge. I don't want to take any revenge upon these people. Lord, you take revenge upon these people. And unlive. Lord. Let this sin be not upon their boards, doorposts. Lord, let it not fall upon them, O Lord. He's full of forgiveness. 
You see, Jesus Christ has said the same words from the cross, right? Same, similar words Jesus Christ has said from the cross. And he's just displaying those words from his mouth. Let this sin does not fall upon them. Jesus Christ's words still linger on earth. There are still some good people, righteous people on this earth. It is our responsibility to carry such kind of forgiveness as we live upon this earth. There is a man in 2 Chronicles chapter 24. Only a Christian can do such kind of forgiveness. Second Chronicles chapter 22, 24. Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 20 onwards. Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 20. Then the Spirit of God came on Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, and he stood above the people and said to him, Thus God has said, Why do you transgress the commandment of the Lord and do not prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord. He has also forsaken you. This is how Zechariah is talking to the king Joash. Okay? In verse 21. So they conspired against him. The kingdom to Matlarathanadu, Zechariah, and to the king. In verse 21. So they conspired against him. And at the command of the king, they stoned him to death in the court of the house of the Lord. You see, same situation as Stephen here. They were stoning to death, uh, stoning Zechariah to death. In verse 22, thus Joash the king did not remember the king kindness which his father Jehoiada had shown him, but he murdered his son. And as he died, he said, May the Lord see and avenge. Here the story is Zechariah was confronting the king and his people. Joash and his people. And Joash and his people, they stoned Zechariah to death. As he was dying, like Stephen, Zechariah is telling, may the Lord take revenge upon you. You see, all the Old Testament is about revenge. All the Old Testament is about wars, struggles, revenge and bloodshed. Killings, murders, blood. But in the New Testament, we say how we can forgive a person through the life of Stephen. He did not say, Lord, we'll take the revenge upon you, avenge upon you. He said, Lord, let this sin not fall upon them. He's full of forgiveness in verse 60. And in verse 60, as we continue, not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. You see, sacrifice is said, Tan Jivitan. Let's read from verse 56 onwards. Acts 7, verse 56 until 60. Acts 7, verse 56 onwards. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened up, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God, but they cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears and rushed to him, rushed at him with one impulse. When they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him. And the witnesses laid aside their robes at the feet of the young man named Saul. This is the first time you see Paul here. Verse 59. They went on stoning Stephen as he called on the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. This man is full of sacrifice. Jesus Christ could stop the stoning upon Stephen, yes or no? He could stop it. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they went to the fairy furnace in the Old Testament, in the book of Daniel, 
Jesus Christ as a fourth person was standing there and the fire did not burn Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. It did not burn them. You see? But the fire burned Stephen. As they were stoning, Jesus Christ did not stop. The stones fell upon Stephen. It broke his skull. It broke his heart, opened up his heart. It broke his eloquent, uh, eloquent tongue. His body was uh, uh, falling like a pile of bones. He dedicated his life. He sacrificed his life for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of his faith. He is full of sacrifice. We have seen ten characteristics from the life of Stephen. And those characteristics still speak to us. As we have read in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Anyone remember? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Jesus Christ had died for all of our sins. And then, we should die for our sins and live unto righteousness. Stephen has died and his righteousness still lives among us and speaks to our hearts individually. He still lives among us. His name is still among us. It worked in Paul's life and it works in our lives as well. As he was praying, Lord, let this sin does not fall upon these people. Somebody was standing and I have showed you that Paul was standing there. What was Paul doing there? He's a ringleader. Means he's encouraging the people. Stone him to death. You have your coat. You know, people remove their cloaks, their, their, cloaks, their uh, robes. Because I the No, no, leave everything to me. Leave everything to me. Come on, put stones upon this man. Kill him. Kill him. You have more stones there. Here, here. Go, kill him, kill him, kill him. Acts chapter 22, verse 20. You see, later on, after many years, as Paul was preaching, he still remember the impact that Stephen has done in his life. You see, he was standing there. He was a ringleader. And then the prayer that Stephen has done, Lord, let this sin does not fall upon this Paul. He would have pierced his heart. You see, God not only talks once, he talks twice. He talks thrice. He may talk ten times, and then he gives you up for devil. If you're not coming to him. For Paul, he would have connected all the dots. Paul would have gone to the, his first dot in his spiritual journey. Stephen, he put the seed in his life. And then that transformed him. And he became a great man of God. And he did not hesitate even to die for Christ. Once upon he was killing people who ever said that I believe in Christ, kill him. Now he did not hesitate to die even for Christ, the Lord Jesus you see the transformation. Stephen's prayer is answered, dear brothers and sisters, in the life of Paul. We have meditated upon ten characteristics. Can you remind me? The first point, uh, what is that? Full of faith. What is that? He is full of faith. His faith we will see in second chapter. He trusted, he took it to his whole heart. There is no wavering faith in his life. Okay? Other people should talk about our faith. There should be proof of, our, uh, proof of faith. should be visible in our lives. Second point, what is that? Full of Holy Spirit. He's full of, our lives should be filled with the Holy Spirit. The way we talk, the way we behave. Our characteristic should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Third one. He's full of grace. We want to be helpful. You have already displayed that. You know very well on that subject. Full of grace. We should be able to show grace outside, in the church, and at home. At home also grace should be children. If your wife is <clears throat> talkative, If you think weak, 
men, we men think that we are logically very strong. Women are logically weak. That's incorrect. We have our blessing and I have weak points. Women have their weakness, their blessings, strengths. They should go along like this. We should show if your wife is very talkative, not understanding, God is reminding you all and me also. Let's show concerns, show grace. Maybe God is trying to teach patience. Maybe God is trying to add another skill in your life, a skill of forgiveness, patience, tenderness. Fourth point, full of power. Full of power. Stephen is full of power. He did not abuse his power to save his own life. That power helped him to stand in any struggle. In college, I was like, I was like, I was job, I was like, fake experience, I was like, 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 both secular and spiritual. I was like, I was like, I was like, okay, I was like, 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 but our take should be the example of their power that God is reminding. In the New Testament law, God does not escape you from the trouble. God does not escape you all the time from sorrowness. He will allow it. But in the New Testament, the new dispensation is He will stand with you as you go through the struggle. He wants you to know that He is with you. You see, Stephen knows that's why he did not hesitate even to die. That's what God wants to see from your life in the New Testament. ఓకే ప్రభా ఏమైతే చనిపోతాను ప్రభా నీ కోసము అనుకో అట్లా ఉండాలా ఆ కాన్ఫిడెన్స్ ఉండాలి లైఫ్లో ఫిఫ్త్ పాయింట్ ఫుల్ ఆఫ్ విజ్డమ్ ఫుల్ ఆఫ్ విజ్డమ్ విజ్డమ్ ఎట్లా వస్తుంది స్టీవెన్ హీ నోస్ హౌ టు గో ఇన్ టు డీప్ ద క్రౌడ్ ద మాబ్ శాన్ హెడెడ్ పీపుల్ ఎనీబడి యూ బ్రింగ్ ద హై ప్రిస్ట్ ఆర్ ఎలక్వెన్సీ పీపుల్ హై నాలెడ్జ్ పీపుల్ యూ యూ బ్రింగ్ టు స్టీవెన్ హీ నోస్ హౌ టు టాక్ టు దే it comes only by knowing the scripture he knows the scripture by reading the word of god next uh, full of full of light sixth one is full of light he is full of light godliness should reflect from our lives seventh one full of scripture scripture atla left and right left and right quote chese sir unprepared message stevens atla undali నేను చాలా కష్టం మీద నేర్చుకున్నా నాకు అన్నీ కష్టం ఎందుకంటే నేను మధ్యలో వచ్చాను క్రిస్టియానిటీలోకి బైబిల్ చదవాలంటే కింగ్ జేమ్స్ బైబిల్ ఇచ్చి టెన్ ఇయర్స్ వేస్ట్ చేసేసుకున్నాను నేను అర్థం కాలే నాకు దౌ దో అని అవన్నీ అర్థం అవడానికి టెన్ ఇయర్స్ పట్టింది నాకు నా క్రిస్టియన్ లైఫ్లో మేజర్ లాస్ వాజ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ దాట్ ఇట్ డజ్ మీన్ దట్ యూ యూ రీడ్ అన్ ఎవీ స్క్రిప్చర్ నో దే షుడ్ బి సమ్ బ్యాలెన్స్ యూ షుడ్ అండర్స్టాండ్ ద స్క్రిప్చర్ అండ్ ఇట్ షుడ్ ఆల్సో బి టచింగ్ ద ఓల్డ్ లాంగ్వేజ్ గ్రీక్ అండ్ హీబ్రూ రిలేషన్ టు ఇట్ and according to me the uh, best versions are nasb and esv if you use nasb that's good because i use, we all if you all use one version it is easy to explain and talk and read i don't know why i went there but um, scripture is full of scripture we should meditate meditate deep in scripture i have uh, done both you know for taking notes and all these things so of course we have to take notes and we have to study but we should be led by the spirit he is purely led by the spirit and he is full of scriptures and uh, he is full of courage courage bite kelli bite evaro lingaranga aitunaru worship time lo ikkada kon bite evaro sisters kanipistunaru elli pilichukurandi anante dhairyam yellali aa dhairyam aaru kuntadi akade teragana vallake dhairyam untadi ane elli cheppagalanu anna vallake adhinda christianity lo courage undalandi ధైర్యం ఉండాలి బోల్డ్నెస్ ఉండాలి నా నైన్త్ వన్ ఫర్గీవ్నెస్ ఫర్గీవ్నెస్ ఈ బ్యాలెన్స్ ఉండాలి ఫర్గీవ్నెస్ ఎక్కడ చూపించాలో అక్కడ చూపించాలి బోల్డ్నెస్ ఎక్కడ చూపించాలి అక్కడ చూపించాలి గ్రేస్ ఎక్కడో ఎన్ని సమపాళ్ళో తెలిసి ఉండాలి మనకి ఫర్గీవ్నెస్ చూపించాల్సిన టైం టైంలో తిట్టకూడదు వాళ్ళని కర్రీ చూపించకూడదు యూ వికెట్ వికెట్ పర్సన్ అనకూడదు okay forgiveness and the last one is full of sacrifice he died for the sake of his faith
దేవుడు పిలిస్తే వస్తావా ఈ రాత్రి నీ విశ్వాసం కోసం చనిపోవడానికి దేవుడు పిలిస్తే వస్తావా నువ్వు క్రిస్టిని కాదేమో గమనించుకో ఒకసారి అనుడు ఎందుకు వస్తాడు అమ్మో అని పరిగెడతాడు అనుక పరిగెడతాడు స్టీవెన్స్ లైఫ్ షోస్ కెన్ యూ డిఫెండ్ మీ ఇఫ్ గాడ్ ఈస్ ఆస్కింగ్ యూ ఈవెన్ అంటూ డెత్ విల్ యూ కమ్ ఫార్వర్డ్ హౌ మెనీ ఆఫర్స్ హ్యావ్ దీస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ క్వాలిటీస్ దట్ గాడ్ హ్యాస్ రిమైండెడ్ ద రైచియస్ క్యారెక్టరిస్టిక్స్ from the life of Stephen. Please stand up.